Good morning and welcome to our celebration on this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Father Andy Pavlak and I'm the pastor of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary here on the West Mesa of Albuquerque and it's a joy to be with you today. Let's begin by marking ourselves with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our constant need for God's love and mercy in our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, what if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. 
What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted, Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, For the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, Lord on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship you at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the circumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for I have a friend of mine has a and arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I all are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, 
he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and, every, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you as we continue in this warm time of our summer season. Ordinary time is moving forward. Things are happening. Um, many opportunities of grace are being known by people who are celebrating weddings and quinceañeras and baptisms. And the fullness of the life truly of the church seems to have um, almost completely, not quite completely, but almost completely come back in this, what we now call almost post-COVID-19 time. So uh, we have these readings today, and I think clearly the one theme, the one idea, the one message that really is kind of woven through all of these readings is that, of course, prayer, and the, that particular part of prayer that we do uh, it, that is persistence. We heard it in the gospel quite, quite literally, but even in that first reading from Genesis with Abraham talking to God about trying to save Gomorrah and Sodom and all that, um, we see the reality of the importance of calling out to God and that persistent prayer, which is really part of all of our lives. So the story of Abraham um, clearly, as we get to the end of the story, we hear that, you know, Abraham is being very persistent. Well, what if there's, you know, 45 or 40 or 30 or 20 or 10 people left in Gomorrah that are worthy of being saved? The answer to the story is, since we know the, the end of the story, no one was saved, so there wasn't even one person that, that God felt was worthy to be saved, and yet the prayer was answered. Maybe not to the way that, you know, people in Gomorrah would have liked, but certainly the way that uh, Abraham was asking, it was certainly done. This gospel story always touches my heart because we see a couple of things happening right off. First off, the, the disciples, the apostles see Jesus praying on a regular basis. We hear all throughout the, the ministry of Jesus that how often he goes off by himself to pray, to have time with his father, to just sit and to kind of reflect or to prepare. Uh, he's either kind of recouping from what he's just done or preparing for the next set of events that are going to happen. And so the disciples see this and they're yearning to understand what he's doing. And so they just ask the simple question, Master, can you teach us? how to pray like John taught his disciples. And he, he gives, of course, them uh, and us the Lord's Prayer. Um, of course, it's not the entirety of the Lord's Prayer. It's not the one we pray whenever we gather together or pray a rosary or what have you. But he, he gives them the prayer, but then he goes into that under, understanding again of the persistence with the example of the friend in need, the neighbor who has visitors who were unexpected. It's clearly after everyone's gone to bed and this neighbor's friend showed up and he didn't have anything to offer him for hospitality and so he's knocking on the door of, of this neighbor and says, uh, you know, please could I have, you know, can I loan just a few loaves of, of bread? And the neighbor's like, we're, we're all in bed, you know, we can't, we can't, I can't accommodate you right now. And yet, um, the, the lesson goes on for Jesus to say, um, you know, it's the persistence of that neighbor who was trying to take care of his friend who eventually got the man out of his bed. Now, we might just think this was a, a small little inconvenience, but what we realize, of course, is in the first century homes, um, they were very small. And so to wake his family up or to get 
the bread for the neighbor meant that he did have to wake up the whole family. He did have to get everybody, because they were all probably in one small space. And for the owner to go to the bread, to get to the door, to give to the friend, meant that the whole household had to be, had to be inconvenienced in order to be able to serve the neighbor who had the friend who was unexpected. That's kind of what our prayer life is all about. Sometimes that persistence is needed and that inconvenience is part of what our prayer life is all about. So this brings us to us now. More often than not, when I'm talking to people who are most often watching this, um, this recording, this live mass, we realize that they're, the folks are very much in their what I call monastery days, elders, people who are infirm, people who are homebound, who often ask the question, oh, does God hear my prayers? And I can assure you, God does. Um, so your prayers, all of our prayers, are so very important that we need to be as persistent as, as we've heard in these readings. In doing so, we need to trust that, yes, God does hear our prayers, God does answer our prayers, maybe not the way we want, but we need to trust that whatever we're asking for from God will be answered in some way, shape, or form. So the moral of the story is keep praying, keep loving God because God keeps loving us and knowing that no matter what trials and tribulations may be out there for all of us, if we trust in God, God will truly answer our prayers. My dear friends, I now ask you, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. <coughs> I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Ask and you will receive. Jesus assures us in today's gospel, and so as his children of God, we bring our knees before our creator in heaven. For the leaders of our nation, that they may work toward the day when no one will be without their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the millions of malnourished people around the world, that a new day will soon dawn when they have plenty to eat and are freed from the anxiety that comes from being unable to feed themselves or their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot forgive themselves and feel that they cannot be forgiven at all, that they may feel remorse for the wrong they have done and realize that they can always find forgiveness in our merciful God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents and the elderly, that they may be loved and cared for, and that the wealth of their knowledge and experience may be valued by younger generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Archdiocese of Santa Fe may never hesitate to open the door for all who knock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, when we call for help, we know that you will answer. Hear our cries for help today and answer us according to your divine will through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
of the mystery of this water. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John Charles, our Bishop, Michael, our retired Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Forever and ever. Forever. Alleluia. Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. One body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessings which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to serve our Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen and Throne above, O Maria. <laughs>